Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you know what day it is? It's game day! I love game days, I love them! Six hours, six hours until I guess we find out whether we're the real deal or whether we're just a team that's getting better. It's days like this, moments like these, where if you're gonna go on that next step, if Tottenham really are a threat this year, then you can't allow voodoo, hoodoo, history, all that nonsense to get in the way of your ambition. And uh, today's a day where we find out if we win, and if we win comfortably, what sort of message does that send, right? Sending shockwaves through the Premier League. Seems like Liverpool and Man City, come on, Bucks, are going to be thinking, oh, shit, Tottenham, uh, they mean business. Got to watch out for them. Chelsea are going to go, why, but, but we always beat Tottenham. That's our six points. It's massive. It's so massive. If we lose, depends how you lose, I guess, right? If you lose badly, if the team plays badly, if the tactics don't work, then, I mean, I think I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> the knives will come out. <laughs> from certain people. Well shit, the window's been rubbish. Emerson needs to be sold immediately. Why is he still here? Why didn't Sessignon sit on the bench like he's supposed to? You know, usual stuff. I don't know what result is actually like better for the mental health of Tottenham fans. Because <laughs> if we lose, like I say, it's going to be nasty. If we win, there's going to be like, and I'm not sure delusion is the word, but like the quad is on, the league is ours. You know, expectations will be raised to obscenely high levels. <laughs> so obviously we want the win. Of course we want the win. But for the mental health of Tottenham fans, you know, maybe like a really nice score draw would probably be uh, <laughs> the most beneficial for our nerves and for our, you know, our energy levels, our frequencies, that sort of thing. Obviously, I still would take the win. I want the win. Would you take the draw right now? If you were offered a two-all draw, would you take it? Let me know in the comments. Um, I also just wanted to ask you guys this one. Uh, because I'm sure some of you might see this before the watch along that we're doing today, 3.30 on the channel. But there's three questions really, or two, two main questions I want to ask you guys. Um, and it's positionals, players. A lot of people this week have been saying, myself included, that you probably don't you know, upset the apple cart, rock the boat with making unnecessary changes, especially with the obvious names that you might want to bring in, haven't really played too many minutes for Tottenham. And they are Perisic and Bissouma. Right, some people are saying it's time for Perisic. Sessegnon did well, but Perisic is a better player and should be transitioned into the team now, providing he's fully fit. I'm not sure I agree about that because I do think today won't be a walk in the park, even though I've gone for a 3-1 victory. I think it'll be a tight game where we take the lead, they equalise, we get the second in the second half, they push and push and push for the equaliser and then we break away and someone like Sonny uh, or Deki gets, uh, gets the winner late on. But for me, I do think there'll be periods of the game where we'll be bank backed in. Like how we usually 
have to tolerate Manchester City and Liverpool where we get back into a 5-4-1. You know, I don't think we're going to dominate possession. I think it will be probably like 60, 62%, something like that towards them. Could be wrong. Usually am. <laughs> but that's why I'm seeing like the 5-4-1 is uh, going to be important to be steady there. And on that basis, last season, you know, Sessegnon was the guy to go to for those big games from a defensive left wing back point of view. He did pocket Saka. He pocketed Salah. Um, I think he pocketed Mares as well. I think for the Man City game, you know. So, and then we, like we lost when we lost to Chelsea. I think in a couple of those games there was Doherty playing left wing back. So, because I think uh, Sessegnon was injured. So, for me, I think that it makes sense to. I'm not saying that I. I just don't know what Perisic is like playing in that kind of five-four-one brick wall defensive pattern we haven't seen enough of him in English football to know uh, but we have seen a fairly decent sample size of Sessegnon doing that role pretty well so plus he played really well so for me I think Sessegnon deserves to start love to know what your thoughts are but I do believe that if we if, if he does start and we lose uh, the the narrative will be why didn't Perisic start which is fine. It is what it is. People will say what they will say. The other question for you is Basuma or Hoiberg. Now, to me, this is a trickier one because I think Hoiberg and Bentoncourt, they have a relationship. They know each other. And I don't think Bentoncourt and Basuma have even played a single minute together yet. So, if it was just that alone as a standalone reason, you would say, no, no way you play Basuma, right? You can't experiment in a massive game like that. Wait for the Forest game or the Wolves game to maybe test out Basuma at Benton Court. But, Basuma is a big game player too. Plays really well against the big teams last season for Brighton and uh, played really well against us in the FA Cup when we won 3-1 and Benton Core and Kulisevsky made their debut debuts uh, Basuma controlled the midfield that day until Benton Core came on in the 70th minute and then it kind of it, that, the, the game changed a little bit the shape changed but Basuma's a big game player, so, you know, and we ultimately think he, he will be better, you know, I think he would naturally come in as the number one choice at some point, alongside probably Benton Core. So you can make the argument that you're going to need Basuma to kind of thwart Kante, Kante, um, Yeah, you're gonna need you're gonna need a bit more pace and smarts, I guess. And I think Basuma offers that. So I don't know. I think um, again, though, I think if you're gonna live via a meritocracy, which is what I love in life, I think that life should be a meritocracy. If you're good enough, you are played until you're not good enough. Then somebody else gets a chance, and then if they take it with both hands, it's theirs to lose. I don't think Hoiberg's done anything wrong yet. And so for me I think that you have to play him. And but if it's not working out, I want to see Conte be very proactive and at half time hook him and then try Bisuma. Time will tell guys, time will tell. Last question for you, I guess is the uh, the easiest one to ask is Emerson Royale or Doherty? Or Jed Spence, who do you want to see unleashed on the right? Um, it's going to be interesting. Whoever Chelsea play, whether it's Kukurea or Chilwell, uh, Chelsea are going to attack down their left, our right, and we need someone who is capable both defensively and able to bring the ball out. 
This is a controversial one again. I think you have to stick with Emerson because of that whole 5-4-1 thing. He's probably the best defensively that we've seen of the three of them. And uh, he's improving. He's improving with everything else in his game. Again, I think he hasn't done enough to be dropped. So to me, it makes sense. Start with the same team as last time and then see how you start the game and go from there. Natural obvious changes would be Perisic, would be Basuma, and if we need to chase the game, maybe Jed Spence or, uh, or Doherty. Richarlison for me sits on the bench, comes off if we need him, but there's no need to disrupt that front three right now. And that's about it. Let me know what your thoughts are, guys. I can't wait to see you at 3.30 on the Spurs talk show for the watch along with Adam William Cahill. It's going to be a fun afternoon. <sighs> do whatever you got to do to get that nervous energy out of your system. And I will see you in a few hours. Come on, you Spurs! Like, share and subscribe. And as always, guys, as always, bye-bye. <laughs>